Merry Almost Christmas, everyone. I'm your host, PT. Welcome to today's episode of the Holly Jolly Kitchen. We're kicking off the Christmas season, and I don't know about you, but I'm super excited. I love decorating the tree, twinkly lights, wrapping gifts, and of course, making all the Christmas goodies. Here on the show, we make and eat lots of treats, but everyone has their favorite. So let's take a poll. If you had to choose your favorite between baked cookies, cupcakes, and brownies, which one would you choose? If you're a cookie fan, wave your hands in the air. Nice. Now make a heart with your hands if you love cupcakes the most. <laughs> okay, and if brownies are your all time favorite treat, pat your legs. Well, jingle all the way. We've got lots of different favorites. Speaking of favorites, now it's time for some of my favorite Christmas carols. Everybody, jump up and sing along, and we'll be right back. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous rain. Now it's time for our next segment of the show, Game Time! Today we're playing Christmas Trivia! We'll put a question on the screen and you'll have a few seconds to guess before the correct answer appears. Ready? Here we go! Which candy is most popular during Christmas time? A. Marshmallow Peeps B. Candy Corn C. Candy Canes Or D. Skittles C. Candy Canes Where was Jesus born? A. Jerusalem B. Bethlehem C. New York City Or D. The North Pole D. Bethlehem 
Which of these is not a popular name for Santa Claus? A. Chris Kringle B. Papa Noel C. Saint Nick or D. Frosty D. Frosty What color belt does Santa Claus wear? A. Black B. Purple C. Red or D. White A. Black too fun! Now it's time for one of my favorite segments as we check in with my friends Graham and Reese in the test kitchen. Sometimes they're trying out new recipes and sometimes they're mixing up the old classics. But no matter what they're doing, they're a ton of fun! Graham and Reese, what's going on in our test kitchen today? Today we ask the age old question. Are you ready? Reese, you ready? Are you really asking if I'm ready for the best time of the year? You bet I am. I knew I could count on you. You live ready for this time of year. Man, I love Christmas. <laughs> I mean, what's not to love? Decorating the Christmas tree, buying presents, oh, and the Christmas cookies. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the Christmas cookies. Do you remember that time that I won a contest for eating the most cookies in 60 seconds? It wasn't easy either, but so delicious. Our viewers weren't there to see it, but trust me when I say it was intense. Anyways, let's get to our recipe, recipe of, of the day. day. All right, so <clears throat> this is from a dude named Ooh, and Gustav. it comes to our kitchen all the way from, wait, what is, why don't we guess what country he's from? Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, let's try and say the same country on three. You ready? One, two, two three, three. Germany! Um, <laughs> Graham, seriously? Uh, Hawaii isn't even a country. <laughs> mm. This letter is coming all the way from the country of Germany. Germany, why didn't you just say so? Oh, I've got a little something for you. That was for you, Gustav, my man. Hmm. All right, so Gustav wants us to recreate his all time favorite Christmas dessert. Uh, we totally can. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I see. You want us to get a drum roll to get this thing going, huh? Okay, I got you. Um, and the dessert, dessert, dessert of the day, day, day is. Herfin Flar Flar. Uh. Fish and Flar for what? N no. Um, Flurfin Flur Flur uh, Flat Flin, uh, Farfin Flan, uh, okay, so if, if I can't even pronounce it, I doubt we can even make it. How is it going to happen? Okay, what's in a name? It's just the language barrier. I mean, tomato, tomato, fish and flarf and flarf, perf and larf and narf. It's no biggie. Have a little Christmas cheer. Reese, we got this. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. Let's just find the ingredients we need and get to cooking. Perfect. Okay. All right, so we need flour, yeah. eggs, baking powder, butter. Um, check. Oh, oh. Uh, check. Um, check any check. Okay, uh, and now we need a quark. Excuse you? No, the ingredient we need is called quark. I'm pretty sure you just made that up. No, look. Hmm, okay, so quark is definitely out. I don't even think that's a real thing, not sure what it is, but we can add, um, oh! Peppermint bark. Quark bark, I mean, it's basically the same thing. No one will know the difference. I mean, I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> okay, so now we need uh, milk, salt, sugar. Oh. Boom, boom, boom! Got it. All right, and our last ingredient here is a uh, cardamom. Hey, you leave my mom out of this. No, no, 
no, no. It's our last ingredient, cardamom. I've like never even heard of that before. Okay, quark, cardamom. This is gonna go down in holly jolly kitchen history as this century's most epic baking disaster. I'm highly doubting ourselves right now. Um, we must definitely have a problem here and we both know what that means. The button. Oh, Ginger Snap for sure. It seems like Graham and Reese are having a rough day in the test kitchen. If you've ever been in a kitchen, you've probably seen one of these. A recipe book is full of the steps you need to make some amazing treats. But even when we try our very best to follow a recipe, things don't always go as planned. Like Graham and Reese, there are times that we try to make something work, but it just doesn't. Seeing them struggle to believe they could make that German specialty reminds me of a book that's way better than any recipe book. It's the Bible, of course. There's a story from the Bible about a man named Zechariah who had some serious doubts too. Let's check it out. Sometimes it's hard to believe that everything God says is true. This story helps us see how we can believe God and that He will do what He says He will do. It all starts with a guy named Zechariah. Oh, hey! Zechariah was a priest, and his job was to take care of the temple. He was married to a woman named... Elizabeth, where are you? Oh, there she is. I'm right here, dear. They loved God and each other. Sadly, there was one thing they were missing. A baby. You see, Elizabeth could not have a baby and they were both very old. Did you say you were cold? No, I think he said that we're old. Now wait just a minute. Ooh, uh, oh, oh, um, my back. One day, while Zechariah was serving inside the temple, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And when he saw the angel, Zechariah was amazed. Uh, yeah, I was also terrified. But Zechariah didn't need to be scared. The angel had some really good news for him. Zechariah, don't be afraid. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give birth to a son and you will name him John. He will bring you joy. He will get people ready for their savior to come. Zechariah couldn't believe what he was hearing. Can I really believe you? My wife Elizabeth and I can't have a baby. We're too old. Can you imagine an angel coming to you and not believing what he had said? Well, that's exactly what happened. Then the angel said to Zechariah, I am Gabriel. God sent me to talk to you and to tell you this good news. But now you will not be able to speak until the day these things happen because you did not believe what I told you, but God will make them happen. There were people waiting for Zechariah outside the temple. He had been inside for a really long time. Well, when Zechariah finally came out, they had lots of questions for him. But just like the angel said, Zechariah couldn't speak. <laughs> What's he trying to say? Is he playing charades? Why can't he talk? It wasn't long after the angel's visit that Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant. She could not believe what God had done for her. Before, Elizabeth had been sad that she couldn't have a baby, but now she was so happy. It's a miracle! When it was time for Elizabeth to give birth, she had a boy. Everyone was so happy for her and wanted Elizabeth to name him Zechariah because this was his father's name, but that is not what she wanted to do. No! He will be named John! The people didn't get it. There was no one in their family named John. Why would she want that name? So they went to ask Zechariah for the baby's name, but he still could not talk. Zechariah, what are you gonna name the baby? It should be a family name, right? Why aren't you saying anything? <laughs> Zechariah still couldn't talk, so they brought him a tablet and he wrote, his name is John, and everyone was surprised. Then immediately, Zechariah could talk again and he began singing to God and praising Him. God gave me a little boy, do-da, do-da, and his name will be John, oh, do-da-day, yeah! 
In his song, he thanked God for sending a Savior to save them and give them freedom. Zechariah also prayed a special prayer for his newborn son, John, saying he would prepare the way for the Savior to come. Zechariah may not have believed God at first, but when God did exactly what he said he would do, Zechariah knew that he could believe God. Zechariah was having a hard time believing that God was really going to give him and his wife a son. But God was able to give them a baby, wasn't he? Yes, God gave Zechariah and Elizabeth a son named John. And even though Zechariah doubted at first, we saw that in the end, he believed God. And the same thing happened with Graham and Reese. They had a hard time believing they could make that recipe work. Sometimes things will get tough for us and we'll wonder how things will turn out. But when we're in the middle of a sticky situation, in the kitchen or out of it, we can believe that God will always come through for us. When He says it, we can believe it. So here's what we need to know today. I can believe God. Now you say it with me. I can believe God. Amazing. We'll be right back after this quick break. Everybody, get on your feet. It's time to sing. Take a seat. Well, jingle all the way. That was such a fun song. Hey, before we can wrap up today's show, we've got one more thing to do. Let's pray together. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus so we can celebrate at Christmas time. Help us to always believe you, especially when we're struggling with feelings of doubt. We love you. Amen. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. We'll see you again next week. From our Holly Jolly Kitchen to yours, so long, everyone. Are we clear? Are we out? We got it? Woo. Great show, everybody. Well done, everybody. Twinkling lights, twinkle, twinkle. Holly Jolly, Holly Jolly, great show, great show. Well done. Is this, is this edible? Is this? I thought that might be sweet. That's that's not sweet. What is this? Can I scratch and sniff? You guys go all out. <laughs> oh, it smells like peppermint. <laughs> ah, you guys. Oh, don't eat it though. Do not do not lick this. This is. This is okay. I'm just gonna.